Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Saturday, June the 27th, and it's 2.47 p.m. I was laying on my bed resting. Couldn't sleep anymore, but I didn't feel like getting up, and I just kept thinking of different weird things popping into my head, and one of the things that came to my mind, I got to thinking about the Lord and different things about Him. And for some reason, it came to me about the Christians that were used by Nero the Emperor. And this was after Jesus died, rose again, ascended into heaven. The apostles had gone out, and I was thinking about some of the videos I'd heard and how a bunch of the apostles, see, we only have Gospels from Matthew, Mark, and John. Now, Luke wasn't even an apostle, but he was not a physician that was evidently around, and was a very learned man. And he wrote the book of Acts as well. Okay, now, so how come we don't have books from the other apostles? Well, I got to thinking about this. Why don't we have, where, where did they go? Why don't we hear from them? And because of uh, Jewish history books, things that were written down in other books, we know that all the apostles were martyred except for John. They tried. They tried. They put him in a vat of boiling oil and it wouldn't kill him. He probably felt like it was a warm bath, but he was unscathed. So they put him out to the island of Patmos. Hey, you, where did you get that napkin? Bring it to mommy. Bring it to me. Honestly, I have a child. He's like a two-year-old. Good boy. Thank you for dropping it. Good boy. Okay, now where was I? Okay, John. Okay. Okay, so then that, that led me to thinking of this scripture... Um, this is after Jesus had risen from the dead and he had gone and, um, met up with the, well, he got, went to the lake and the apostles were fishing. Now they have seen him already. He just came through the door twice. The second time, remember, jo Thomas was there and he let Thomas put his fingers in his holes, wherever they were, probably around here, and, and in his feet and in his side. And then he said, oh, I believe. And he said, blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. Well, anyway, so they've seen him, but yet they're really down. And they said, well, I'm going. Peter says, I'm going fishing. So they go fishing. And Jesus comes along and... He says, uh, so do you have any fish? Um, and they said, no. Our children, you do not have any fish. This is in, um, I'm in John chapter 21. All right, so Jesus appears at the Sea of Galilee. All right, he, show, he shows up and he says, um, <laughs> after Peter says, I am going fishing. Okay, so the others said, we will come with you. They went out, got in the boat, they caught nothing. But, but when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, children, you do not have any fish, do you? They answered him, no. I imagine they were yelling. They were still in their boat. And he said to them, 
Cast a net on the right hand of the boat, and you will find a catch. So they cast, and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. And therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, which is John, for some reason he called himself that, said to Peter, It is the Lord! So when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put his outer garment on, for he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but about 100 yards away, dragging the net full of fish. So anyway, they're having breakfast. All right. He ends up asking them how many. Um, they caught 153. Now, we all know that that is an important number. Some people have tried to figure it out. That this minus this number of days comes to 153. So, okay, maybe this is the day of the rapture. You know, things like that. We don't know why, but that's an important number, 153. All right, so they're having some breakfast. All right, and on getting on in the chapter, Jesus says to, to Peter, Peter, or well, he calls him Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? See, he said it three times. And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Another version says, Feed my sheep. Well, anyway, so that's, that's where we're at. Now, verse 18. Uh, this is titled, Our Times Are in His Hand. Heavenly Father, I ask you to please help me to pull this all together and make sense the way I was thinking of it. Tell it, help me to tell it the way you want it told. In Jesus' name I pray. Because this is a hard word. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Now this he said, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. Peter, turning around, saw the disciple. Now, see, he was talking to Peter. Okay? We don't know how all the apostles died. Um, Lord, who... Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who also had leaned back on his bosom at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? He's talking about John. So Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what about this man? Peter saying, what about John here? Is he going to die like that? Or something, you know. He's thinking something like that. Jesus said to him, If I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Therefore, this saying went out among the brethren that that disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but only if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? 
Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and finish it. Verse 24. This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. He's talking about himself. himself. And there are also many other things which Jesus did that if they were written in detail, I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books that would be written. Did I not just say that yesterday or the day before in a video? I think I did. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Anyway, this could not be a coincidence. But I was brought to this channel, this chapter 21. Anyway, here's my point. I got to thinking about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's check my position. I just uncrossed my legs. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, what happened with Daniel? Daniel refused to stop praying like the crooks, criminals, the other right-hand men, whatever you want to call them, who were so jealous, they got the, the um, was it Cy Cyrus? Anyway, whoever was in charge, I don't remember. They got the king, emperor, whatever, to make a law that nobody could pray to any other god besides his god for 30 days. And Daniel made a point of still, he just prayed as he always did, three times a day, kneeling in his window, the same window. Okay. Good boy. What a good boy. Oh, that's my good boy over there. Good boy. And he's doing good. <laughs> good boy, Jasper. Such a good boy. Oh, you're such a good boy. Yes, you are. You're doing such a good job. Okay. Then with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, wait a minute. Back up. Daniel. So Daniel got arrested. And they reminded the king, you can't rescind your word. Your word cannot be broken, so he had to throw him in the den of lions, and we all know what happened. The angels came and shut the mouths of the lions, and Daniel didn't die. But even the emperor was on his side and praying, fasted, didn't want any entertainment, told him to go away, leave me alone, and he didn't sleep at all that night, and he ran to the den hoping that Daniel was not hurt, and he wasn't. Okay, so he was spared. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, same thing. They were good servants to the king, but they refused to bow down to his tall statue, and so they too got thrown into the fiery furnace to should have burnt in a crisp. Because the guys that threw him in there, the furnace was so hot, it killed him. Now that is some heat. Okay, so they lived. Then how come you think it is? Why? This is what was coming to my mind. Why, God, would the Christians who got arrested and tied to poles, had oil poured over them, got lit on fire by Nero, who was a type of Antichrist, and they burned to light his garden. Now, how could people sit around partying and smelling human flesh burning? It's so beyond me. It is sick. Satanic people are just sick. Anyway, they died. The others didn't. 
Why is that? Well, I want you to remember what Jesus said. If I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Okay. It could be that that was just God's will. It could be they weren't as strong a Christian as John and Daniel, which they weren't Christians, but they were men of God following the laws given to them to follow in their day. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were the epitome of holy men. Whereas, I'm just saying maybe, these others weren't. Maybe some escaped, ran, got hidden, the Lord made them invisible as the soldiers ran by. I don't know. But this I know. The word says, what is it to you if he lives until I come back? It's basically what he was saying. You follow me. So we don't worry about it. The Lord has already told those who are part of the bride, I believe he has told they are. Hey, hey, hey. Do not... You... I have a sweet potato vine over here. I'm pretty sure it's edible, but I have to keep... I have to look it up. I'm not sure the leaves are. Now his little chin is all dirty. Jasper, you're going to have to lay down and play with your toys. I'm trying to make a video. Okay? Will you please try to lay down? Lay down right there by my feet. Lay down right there. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. He likes to lay by my feet on the ottoman. There, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. Yeah, that's a good boy. Okay. All right, we don't know what's going to happen, but we do know the promises of God are true. He is not a man that he would lie, all right? But the fact is, the Bible is full of, if you do this, then I'll do that. If you obey me, if you follow my commandments, if you love one another, if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you see, if you forgive those who have hurt you or sinned against you, it's ifs. If you do these things, if you get intimate with me in prayer, if you press in and get closer and closer to me, then I will reward you with this, this, and that, and the other, depending on the verse. Eternal salvation will come to all who believe and repent. Repentance is what wipes you clean, keeps your garment holy, asking forgiveness when you do wrong. But you can't ask for forgiveness and not forgive your neighbor. You can't just ask for forgiveness and never help a neighbor in need when you have the money. You can't, you can't. Oh my, how do I put this? Lord, help me to close this up. The Bible tells us what to do. Many books were removed. Yes, I do believe many of them belonged in there. I don't know if they all belonged in there or not. I haven't had a chance to read them. <laughs> I don't know if they're available to read. But anyway, the point is, you do what the Word says. Okay? Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. He gave us two. And don't put heavy burdens on people that are not in there to be put on. You do what your conscience tells you to do. 
and let Jesus take care of the rest. Now, if you see your brother or your sister, or if the Lord leads you to, tell somebody what you're doing is a sin, and if you don't repent of it, you will go to hell. If you're led to do that, you do it. Or their blood might be on your hands. You see, you, it doesn't take a lot of knowledge. You don't have to know the whole book by heart. You don't have to have been through seminary to try to lead somebody to the Lord. And maybe you don't want to start off with, if you don't quit that, you're going to go to hell. Maybe you want to start off with, I would first pray real quick in my head, Holy Spirit, help me do this. Tell me how to do it lovingly and correctly. Start off with the love, how much Jesus loves you. And he died so that your sins can be forgiven and you can go to heaven too. And this kind of thing, it's just, he hates it. Put it like that. Doesn't that sound better? Yeah, it does. So, I hope I made my point. The Lord's going to decide whoever goes where, when, and when. And remember that the Bible is full of ifs. If you do this, I'll do that. Like he told Peter, what business is it of yours if I let him live till I return? It's none of our business except to the point where if one of our brothers in Christ is doing wrong, we should tell them. We, sh we have to stop shit uh, what do you call it, sweeping things under the rug in the name of being a troublemaker or uh, some other name people use. Uh, we just got to all get along and we got to all be peacemakers. No, not always. Sometimes people need to be told, look what you're teaching is wrong. Or people do it to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, they don't mind telling me I better repent or I'm going to hell. <laughs> Problem is they don't know what they're talking about. If it's something the Lord told me or showed me, you know, I'm not going to back down. But if it's something that's my opinion, then I'll just take it to prayer and ask the Lord and try to do some research on it. That has hardly ever happened. It's usually on some doctrinal issue, like once saved, always saved. People want to tell me, if I don't repent, I'm going to hell for not trusting in the blood of the Lamb and stuff like that. Well, anyway, it's getting on 23 minutes. I am, oh, by the way, my phone has been making that noise. It did it at 8.10 yesterday and 8.12 today. I'm writing down the times, and I, I keep rebuking. As one of you told me that it's of the devil. And I have pleaded the blood of Jesus over my phone. I have rebuked it. I have said, devil, you don't touch my phone and don't make it make any sounds again in Jesus' name. And it keeps doing it. So I don't know what to think. And I tried to look up one. I didn't put AMs or PMs. I thought, does it matter? You can't put that in strong concordance anyway. And I thought maybe I should be looking these numbers up. But I hadn't started yet. What do you all think? Those of you who feel you really hear from the Lord, I'd ask you to please take it to prayer. Help me take it. I mean, because I'm praying about it too. I want to know, Lord, is this of you or not? And it's not stopping. And I asked him to make it stop if it was not of him. 
Okay, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, myself, my computer, and over each and every one of you, and your devices, and your internet connections, and with that, I say bye for now. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the weekend. I'll talk to you later.